Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to do a lovely spring card with a fantastically simple technique to paint some loose watercolour butterflies. So grab your paints and let's get started. So I'm going to begin by drawing a square on a piece of uh, sort of four by six inch paper. So set square is a really handy thing. When I say a square, it's going to be a sort of slightly rough, a rough square. Sort of maybe got a slight feel of it being like a, like a Polaroid or something. Yeah, that feels, feels good. I like the idea of the design sort of sitting in this square quite high up on the page and then we can sort of write something beneath it. Okay, so there we go. Let's just straighten everything up again. Now we're going to paint a wash on this square as the background. So I've got permanent rose and a little bit of yellow ochre and that makes a lovely blush colour add more water into the palette to make your colour nice and dilute and then I'm going to use my one stroke brush always make sure with your large brushes that you've given them a good check you see the green just lurking in that brush this is a really good like reminder actually I'm just really squishing the bristles right on the bottom there just to make sure that this brush is clean before I use it okay I think we're all right but yeah the larger brushes are going to hold on to color however hard you clean them there's more likely to have something hidden in there okay so I'm going to use the one stroke brush to paint in this square you know you can see the wash is very very translucent and pale and that's what I want and you can see it's very easy to get this painted in in a nice crisp sharp cornered square and we're going to let that dry. So you must make sure that your wash is really translucent because we want to make sure we can easily paint things on top. While that dries, this is a really good opportunity to talk a bit, a bit about colour palettes. So I'm just now, I've got a little swatch here and I'm just playing around with creating a set of colours. So that there is cadmium no sorry cadmium orange yellow ochre and a bit of permanent rose so I basically just added a bit more intensity to the wash color um, and added in some more color there I think I also want some pure permanent rose and then in the greens I feel like a turquoisey colour is going to work really nicely because of the the pink base for all of this. So I've got cobalt turquoise here, which I will place on there. And then I think, I actually think a bit of a yellowy green, so green gold could work quite nicely. Yeah, I quite like that. So that is my reference. Um, for my colour palette. So it's just, it's handy to do one of those on a colour swatch um, when you're planning a piece because you're never quite sure sort of what you're going to, well, you know, these things are always better with a bit of planning. So if you're not quite sure what you're going to do, um, there we go. Now, I talked about some butterflies and I know a lot of you are very keen to learn a nice simple butterfly. Well, what I'm going to do for starters is I'm just going to sketch out a design. So what I want to do is I want to use the 
the, the box, the square, as a, one of those nice sort of vignettes where things sort of spill out and we'll have some things coming out down the side, but also things coming in and not, not everything spilling out all the time. So I'm always looking about looking for curves and and making things sort of nicely organic and not too not too symmetrical. So there we go, the stems are looking nice there. That's looking good. I'm happy with that. Um, and so in the gaps, I can feel like there's a good gap there. I'm going to put a little line, which is going to be the center of the butterfly, maybe one there. And then I think what might be nice is one just popping out the top. Okay. Remember to draw your pencil nice and light so that you're not going to be trying to scrub it out later. Okay. I'm going to use this orangey colour first and what I'm going to do is I am going to do two brush strokes out to the side and you can see they're not symmetrical, they're not perfect but then this means that we can start to give them a bit of shape but also not to worry too much. What Essentially what we want is a feel of the sort of top half going a bit further than the bottom half. And then from the same point, I'm just going to fan out the brush in a slightly more rounded manner. So I'm using a size zero for this. And I'm working quite fast because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pink color and I'm going to do this. And I think that is a pretty gorgeous butterfly done without too much too much effort to be honest which is we, we do like that um, I'm going to try a, a turquoise one now and this time I'm going to use the turquoise quite pale so I'll just get some in my palette well add a bit of water and let's have another go so just fanning out and I just brought the bottom in there, so fanning out, bring the bottom in. And you can see how it's quite nice to have these fairly imperfect edges. So downwards and then just sort of fill it in there. Now, instead of using a different color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a concentrated version of the turquoise. So just to get it from the thicker part and let's see that's rather nice isn't it for our last one I'm going to take a little bit of a risk and paint in a green gold and I'm going to do a, like a slightly baby size one little one here Trying to keep the colour not too, not too concentrated. Just remember that it's all about your timing. Now here's the here's the risk. I'm going to try permanent rose as the second colour. It might be disgusting, but hey ho. I think that's okay, but what's really important is that you wouldn't start over poking and prodding that, that pink. You just want to drop it in and leave it and then those colours will work okay together. Now we're going to start painting in some flowers. Now the whole point with these colours is we can now play around with the value of them. So that means whether we could go for a slightly lighter version, um, you know, slightly more dilute version that's all fine too. Obviously we've got a, a pale pink background, but if I just add a little bit more permanent rose to the pale pink wash, I should be able to paint in a color that will show up on top. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start 
just painting in some little flowers and these petals what I'm doing is using the fine tip of the brush and fanning out the bristles and doing a sort of five or six petal flower and then maybe a few little little sort of buds as well nice and dilute I think that's really important when you're when you're first putting in these types of things and uh, we'll, we'll pop in one that sort of crosses the threshold you can see there that I've done shorter petals on one side and it just sort of makes it look like the flower is just a little bit angled over sort of slightly droopy droopy petals and there you go one from the side as well so in, instead of always doing a, a full sort of open faced central flower you can play around with the angles as well you can place in buds and flowers in, in areas you haven't yet sort of drawn stems that's absolutely fine um, I'm now going to do a slightly different type of flower with my different colour. So I'm going to do a bit more of a sort of tulip kind of shape, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a tulip because this is one of those nice sort of whimsical, not based in too much reality flower illustrations. This is just two little mirrored strokes. And then sometimes it's quite nice to paint something that isn't overlapping on the edge. I think it's important to have a combination of things that do and don't. Still with the size zero brush, I'm now just doing a last set of simple flowers by just dabbing the brush in um, a, a selection of sort of circles, more squashed ovals, and that gives the flower more of a, an angled look. And that has given us a, a nice array of flowers. Might just do one popping off the bottom there. Lovely. Okay, so we are going to let all of this dry 100% and then we're going to start adding in our foliage. I'm now going to use my rigger brush, the long slender bristle brush, and some green gold because that's the colour we haven't used yet and I'm going to start sort of, I'm going to have to angle this a bit, I'm going to start by painting in my stems. So the idea is, is I want, I've got the pencil stems but there's every chance that the way I've drawn the flowers will mean I need to sort of veer off the pencil stem but the lovely thing about the rigger brush is you get wonderful control and uh, and it, it sort of lasts a long time the paint is stored on the brush so that you can paint these lovely long lines without running out of paint. So those are looking nice and I think what would be cool is to see what happens if we combine the turquoise and the green gold and make a new green 
and a, a new colour for our piece. But it's going to be made from the colours that we've already sort of put into our palette. So I can do the last the last stems with this colour. We've got so many card uh, inspiration tutorials for card making and general sort of nice little vignettes for flower painting. So if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, um, you know it's completely free. There's not even, like there's no money involved with subscribing to a YouTube channel. So, uh, but it does such wonders to support the uh, the artist, that's me and and aunt who edits and films everything. Um, so if you haven't already, just click subscribe just down below because it just helps us so much. And uh, yeah, it allows us to keep creating all these nice videos. Any kind of engagement is great. And also I love to know how you got on with the tutorial because then I know whether we should do more like this or less or anything like that. So yeah, head over down down that way <laughs> and yeah click the subscribe button and I'm just going to wait for that to all dry. The next stage is leaves so you can see I've started to add a few sort of long slender leaves to my orange sort of tulipy flowers um, so all I'm doing is I'm using a slightly smaller brush now I've got a two tenths brush and I'm just using the fine tip of the bristles and then pressing it down. We've got so many videos on um, how to sort of achieve these brush strokes to create leaves and petals in uh, my watercolour for beginners playlist and also in the flowers and foliage playlist and the quick fix. Like It's such a key part of, of my kind of painting that it always comes up so if you're wanting more help with that just yeah go and look at all the different playlists we've got and then I'm going to uh, the, you know these flowers are all completely made up so I'm now going to create a, a a slightly sort of serrated edge leaf a bit more like a little fern thing so I'm doing a central one and then I'm just doing a few extra little side ones like that as well so I'll do one coming up from the base you do want to make sure that you're filling up at least the bottom edge of your piece as much as you can. And then further up, you're just looking to sort of fill up a, a nice jigsaw puzzle. But I think the best thing if you're if you're new to watercolour, have a little practice page off to the side, you know, practice your leaves elsewhere, but if you're feeling a bit nervous on how to put them on to your leaves, onto your onto your actual piece. Now at this stage we've got leaves filled in um, but I want to now use this opportunity to just, I don't know, fill in the gaps maybe with a bit of extra foliage. So you could use your rigger brush if you want or I've just quickly painted in a, a little stem just using my two tenths brush. I also want to get a slight, slightly more <laughs> Of a feeling of, of leaves coming down over the bottom so I sort of make a slightly different choice with this plant here and I'm going to have I'm gonna have a stem that comes out it's all about sort of 
balancing the composition now. Because you can never be entirely sure when you're starting sort of what is going to work. And in fact, I'm going to make that one come all the way down and out. I've also got this stem here where I haven't actually put any flowers on, but I could put just a load of leaves. Because I want to make sure it feels like the butterflies are nestled into the piece and not just sort of randomly floating about. I think we're not far off. In fact, that might be enough. I sort of feel like I want something there. So I might just put in, coming in from the side, another little turquoise flower. Now we're going to let all of this dry and then we can do a little bit of detail and just bring it all to life. So here are some super simple tricks to just get a bit of detail on your flowers. So you can see what I've done there. So with just a bit of more concentrated permanent rose, I'm just adding a few extra dabs. Um, in the buds, I'm actually painting in like a bit in the top, which just looks like it's opening, or just a little bit on the base like that. And then Just sort of keep changing it up, I think, with those buds. And yeah, finish off like this. So we're still in our very limited colour palette, but I don't know about you, it feels like there's a real riot of colour going on. So we can do the same kind of thing with the turquoise flowers add a bit more concentrated colour so I'm just adding a few sort of extra dabs around the sort of the, the bottom half and I feel like I will do that and then I will add a little bit of a warm colour in the middle Some of them I painted quite strong in the first place, so we won't always see the benefit of it. But it's it's the accumulation of all these little bits of detail that create a, a rather lovely piece as a whole. So you can see I've added a little bit extra strong sort of orange colour to the orange flowers and now a little bit of green gold to the centre of the turquoise flowers and I'm I'm thrilled with that. Oh and I put a tiny a few tiny dots of the orange colour in the middle of uh yeah in the middle of the piece there as well. So the last thing to do is really to go back to these butterflies and you know they're stylized butterflies so I'm gonna take some strong orangey colour and I'm going to do a little dot and then a little oval and then an even longer oval that sort of turns into a bit more of a teardrop I suppose. We'll take the strong turquoise, do that one up here, so a little circle, oval and a teardrop.
I'm really thrilled with this. I think um, you know, there's always a there's always scope for little bits more detail here and there. If you wanted, you could add a a little bit of detail to the butterflies. Maybe a few little spots on the wings, circles like that, little dabs. But I don't think you have to. Um, there's a lot going on already and, and beauty is, is simplicity. In my humble opinion, especially when it comes to nature, it's just it's just doing it all for us really. Um, but I do love a bit of detail. And then of course, some little antennae is kind of cute as well, isn't it? So, so we're going to finish this piece off by letting everything dry 100%, making sure we're happy with all the detail we've got, and then we're going to rub out the pencil and see what we're left with. And there we have, all rubbed out, a lovely spring floral vignette with a really simple method to paint cute little butterflies. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course if you never want to miss another video then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and we'll see you again next time. Bye!